everyone. Let's now have the introduction to linguistics. Particularly, we will discuss the classification of vowels. Last time, we have uh, classified consonants and had given practice drills on how consonants can be classified. Now, let's have a backgrounder about vowels and how they could be classified. So, to make us understand more, here's another example. When the front or back of the tongue is raised towards the roof of the mouth, the vowel is called high. This is the case of peel, neat, look, or soon. When the front or back of the tongue is as low as possible, the vowel is called low, as in land, star, or dog. When the tongue occupies the position intermediate between the high and the low one, the vowel is called mid. And for example, we have get and then stressed about. Depending on the part of the tongue that is raised, most vowels are classified into front, back, and central vowels. Examples. When the front part of the tongue is raised towards the hard palate, the vowel is called front. Example, meet, get, or land. When back part of the tongue is raised towards the soft palate, the vowel is called back. As in star, dog, law, or soon. When front part of the tongue is raised towards the back part of the hard palate, the vowel is called central, as in about, much, or nursed. These high and low front back dimensions of vowel articulation are also referred to as vowel quality. To illustrate how the articulatory properties of vowels relate to each other, a vowel chart is commonly used as a reference system. The chart below is adopted from Courtman 2006, describes the basic qualities of most standard varieties of English together with their phonetic transcription. So last time I had discussed to you in our physical or face-to-face -face class how the vowels are classified. So the one I will be providing here is just the reinforcement of our discussion. And I also gave you the International Phonetic Alphabet. And as you can see here, we have the vowel chart. The vowel chart is basically this form of letter V, or slanted letter V, with appropriate sounds and example words for you to locate uh, the E sound as in meat, the E sound as in pit. We have the S sound as in met. We have the A sound as in cat. We have the A, the A sound as in bar. We have the A. In between O and A, pod. And we have the O, O, as in dumbed. And we have the inverted E, as in about. And then we have the earth sound, as in bird. We have the O, O sound, as in sword. We have the U sound, as in book. And we have the U sound, as in boots. as part of the vowel chart. As can be seen from this chart, some vowels do not only differ qualitatively, but also quantitatively, as indicated by the colon as a diacritic for length. So I had given you also the diacritic symbols or diacritic uh, definition. When the word uh, or the symbol has a diacritic or the colon on it, it means it should be pronounced longer, as in meat, as in e, e, e should be missed, er, er, it should be bird. This one, booze, oo, as in boots, boots. And then, uh, oh, oh, as in sword, and ah, ah, as in bar. So it means you have to pronounce the words longer. 
since they have the diacritical mark. Long as opposed to short vowels also differ by being tense as opposed to lax. When we say tense vowels, these are the long vowels. And when you say lax, they are the short vowels or the relaxed vowels. Let's define for us to better understand the difference between the tense and the non-tense or the lax vowel. Tense vowels are produced with a deliberative, accurate, maximally, uh, maximally distinct gesture that involves considerable muscular effort. Tense vowels are either long vowels, as in E, mist, or diphthongs, A, A, as in say. Non-tense or lax vowels are produced rapidly and are therefore short, as in peel, peel, instead of saying peel, right? So, tense vowels, long vowels, nonsense vowels, short vowels. Let's now have diphthongs. The vowels described so far have all been monophthongs. In contrast to the diphthongs or gliding vowels, where the tongue moves from one position to another. Examples can be found in as in day, fight, oil, so, and now for the so-called closing diphthongs. While centering diphthongs such as occur, for example, in bear, beer, and sure. So therefore, class, we have this uh, diphthongs as known as the gliding vowels. And I had also discussed to you in our face-to-face -face -face meeting that uh, there are lots of diphthongs in our alphabet sounds. Let's now have the phonemes and phonology. Phonemes in contrast to phones are defined by their function within a language system as in land. This function is basically one of meaning differentiation. Although other functions of phonic means, such as expressive function of vowel lengthening, are also possible. All sounds, however, which have a meaning differentiating function within a given language are considered phonemes within that language system. So these are abstract idealized units within our minds or parts of our model of a language that we design in language use as in parole. Phonemes are always realized as phones, which I already discussed to you as well in our uh, description of phonetics and phonology last time. The land and the parole. So land refers to function within a language uh, system and parole is how it is used or how language is used now let's have some terminologies and example the task for the smallest distinctive units of a given language system is the minimal pair test for example when a difference in sound structure also causes a shift in meaning, an example is a k in cable and t in table, which therefore constitute phonemes of English, indicated by the notation k and t. Note, however, that we are dealing with the actual sound structure here, not with the spelling. So, class, it should be the actual sound, not the spelling. So, T or he are a minimal pair, while C and C are not. Also, minimal pairs are only pairings that differ in exactly one segment. So, pin and tin or teen and ten are minimal pairs, while pin and ten would uh, be not. So, I'll give you enough time for you to analyze how uh, minimal pairs are classified. So, we look on the difference in sound structure and as well as not dealing with the actual sound structure not with the spelling so it's for you to find out how 
Let's dig deeper on diphthongs. Some sound differences do not differentiate meaning, as in the pronunciation of l in words lepin pale, while the difference may be only slight. You may try to keep track where you place the tip of your tongue. From a phonetic point of view, the two realizations of L have to be considered two phones, but not two phonemes. They are called clear and dark L and are two allophones of the phoneme L in English. In contrast to phonemes, Allophones do not occur in minimal pairs, which means they are either ne never occur in the same environment. Complementary distribution, as in the case of clear and dark L, L or the L, they occur in free variation. For example, voiceless plosives at the end of a syllable or word are sometimes aspirated if deep is pronounced as deep. Deep. Is pronounced as D, but they may just as well not be able if D is pronounced deep. The decisive difference between phonemes and their allophones is that the variants of a phoneme do not differentiate meaning, and therefore the sound difference does not constitute a relevant phonetic features. So there would be instances class that we have aspirated as in D, D as in deep. So it's for you to find out uh, more and I will be discussing more of this in our finals. So let's proceed. Last time I also discussed prosody, right? So to give you a recap, prosody belongs to the domain of suprasegmental phonology that is describing phenomena extending more than one phony. The phenomena that belong here are stressed, rhythm and intonation while stress can be word or sentence stressed rhythm or intonation occur in phrases and sentences intonation is described by reference to pitch or tones and different levels of pitch are used to express a wide range of meanings for example we use the difference between a falling and a rising pitch pattern in statements statements and questions so here are my references for some of the technical descriptions. You can also have the following books or ebooks for your advanced reading. So with that, thank you so much for listening to the rediscussion of our face-to-face -face class for those who are not uh, able to attend our lecture last meeting. So with that, thank you so much for listening.